Hi. Now there's going to be many occasions when you're going to be asked to solve an equation. And often when you get an equation like this one for instance x cubed plus 2x minus 2 and it equals 0, what we normally try and do is factorize it so that we could put each of the factors equal to 0 and then solve it from there. But not every equation factorizes and becomes very difficult to solve. So how do we go about finding solutions to equations like this? Well there's many numerical methods out there and we're going to look at one particular one and it's called the bisection method. And methods like these, these numerical methods, can often be put very easily onto computers and then run very fast and give us the required solution. So basically how does this work? Well we've got an example here that I'll run through this for you. We're given that x cubed plus 2x minus 2 equals 0 has a root, a solution in other words, between 0 and 1. And we've got to find this root to one decimal place using the bisection method. So to do this what you would normally do is make sure your equation equals zero. If it doesn't, just rearrange it, make it equal to zero. And then define, say, some function of x. Let's say we say let f of x, in this case, obviously you can use g of x, anything you like, be identical then to the left-hand side of your equation. In this case, x cubed plus 2x minus 2. Now, Essentially, we know that the root lies between 0 and 1. In other words, this graph, let's say y equals f of x, this graph should cross the x-axis, that's when y equals 0, somewhere between 0 and 1. So if we had a sketch of this graph, let's just draw our axis here. It's not drawn to scale, but it just hopefully gives you some idea of what's going on. So we've got say our y and x-axis. So we know the graph goes somewhere between 0 and 1. It crosses between this interval. We can see this because we know that if we do f of 0 in this case, if you were to substitute x equal to 0 in here, you get a negative number, minus 2. And if you were to do f of 1, if we go to the end of this interval, doing f of 1 we've got 1 plus 2 which is 3 minus 2 gives us 1. So we have a change in sign. We know that the graph then crosses the x-axis somewhere between 0 and 1 because at 0 it's negative 2 and at 1 you just get 1. So our graph's going to go through somewhere like this. And where it crosses will be our root. Now, what we do essentially, this method called the bisection method, is we now halve this interval, 0 0.5 in this case. So if we just put 0 0.5 in here, let's just mark that in as 0 0.5. Okay, we halve the interval and we now check out to see whether there's a change in sign over the interval between 0 to 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 to 1. If there is a change in sign, say over this first interval here, then we know that the curve would have passed through between 0 and 0 0.5. If it was a change in sign between 0 0.5 and 1, then the graph would have passed through the interval 0.5 to 1. And then whatever interval it passes through, we halve that width of that interval again, gradually narrowing that width down until we get the appropriate level of accuracy that we require for that root. So I don't know if you're happy with pausing the video and just giving this a go at this stage. If so, just pause it come back when ready and I'll run through the solution from here on. Okay, welcome back if you did have a go. So 
We now have halved this interval and we've got to establish then which part of this interval the curve passes through by considering a change in sign. And to do that, we need to work out then what f of 0.5 comes out to be. And if we do f of 0.5, substitute 0.5 into here, you find that you end up with minus 0.875. This is a negative value, and so that means that at 0.5 we had a value down here. So clearly the curve must have come up through here and crossed somewhere between 0.5 and 1. So we now need to consider this interval from 0.5 to 1 and cut that interval in half and check for a change in sign again. I'll draw a sketch here. You don't have to draw these sketches if you're working this out, okay? It's just here just to help ease the situation, okay? So we've got the interval now 0.5 to 1. We know that at 0.5 the graph was negative and we know that at 1 it was positive. We need to take the midpoint of this interval. So the midpoint is just the mean of these two values. Just add them together and divide by 2. So you've got 0.5 added to 1 is 1.5. Divide by 2, so it's going to be 0.75. So we're checking out what happens at this point here. x equals 0.75. So we need to do f of 0.75. Let's just put it in here, f of 0.75. What do we get when we substitute that into here? We should find you get a negative value, minus 0.078 and so on. So if I add this to the graph, at 0.75 we've got a negative value. So again we can see that the graph must have come up like this and crossed in this interval from 0.75 to 1. Now this interval here is not narrow enough for us to give our answer to one decimal place because to one decimal place this value would be 0 0.8 and this would be 1. There's no change in our values here. So we need to keep this going. So we've now established that our root lies between 0 0.75 and 1. So if we were to draw another graph here Let's just put it over here. Our x-axis, our y-axis, and we've now established that the root lies between 0.75 and 1. So we'll just put that in as 0.75, and we've got 1 here. We know that it was negative at 0.75, and we know it's positive at 1. But we halve this interval, bisect it, Add these two values together, divide by 2, and that midpoint there will be 0 0.875. So, what do we get when we work out f of 0 0.875? We only want to determine whether we get a positive value or a negative value. When you put 0.875 through your equation, you end up with a positive value, 0.4 1, 9, and so on. And if we put that in the graph here, we know that we've got a positive value there. So that's indicating that the graph must have come up through here and crossed through this interval between 0.75 and 0.875. So is this sufficient? What's this to one decimal place, 0.75? Well, that's 0.8. And what's 0.875 to one decimal place? Well, 0.9. So they're still different. So we haven't narrowed this interval down sufficiently yet to give our answer to one decimal place. So we need to, to do it again. So hopefully this will be the final time. Let's just see what we get. So we've got our axes there. Our interval now is between 0.75 and... 0.875. I'll just enlarge it there just to give us space. So we take the midpoint here 
Okay, the midpoint of those two values, just add them together and divide by two. And if you do that, you'll get 0 0.8125. We know that at 0 0.75, the graph passed below the x-axis. And at 0 0.875, we got a positive value, so it's above the x-axis. So we just now need to work out what f of 0 0.8125 is. So f of 0 0.8 8, 1, 2, 5. Is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? Feed that through your value in this equation here and you'll find you get a positive value, 0 0.161 and so on. So if we add that to our interval here, we know we've got a positive value. So the graph must have come up through here like so. So we know it's in this interval between 0.75 and 0.8125. And what's 0.75 to one decimal place? Well, it's 0 0.8. And 0.8125 to one decimal place is also 0.8. So both return exactly the same value to one decimal place, 0.8. So we know that the root, even though we don't know exactly what it is, we know that it lies in this interval and it must therefore be 0 0.8 to one decimal place. So therefore x equals 0 0.8 to one decimal place, one dp. Okay, so I hope it's given you an idea then of this method, the bisection method. As I say, you don't necessarily have to draw these diagrams there's different ways that we can lay this out. Some people prefer writing out in a table form. But essentially, this is the method that we adopt. And it is one of many numerical methods that we use. And these kind of methods can be, as I said earlier, placed on computers, written into programs, and they would be able to give us our answer very quickly. Okay, so good luck if you have to do a question like this.